how you take care of your health and family. Now this man has made some outrageous predictions over the years, but the crazy part is he's usually right. You see, he predicted the collapse of GM, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and America's biggest mall owner, General Growth Properties, a few years ago. In fact, Baronis called his work a dire prophecy. Now, this has nothing to do with the stock market, but it could have a huge impact on almost every aspect of your life. And recently, he created a video, which you can watch online for free, detailing his biggest and most important prediction yet. And it's a real eye-opener. I can't stress this enough. You should at least watch this free video online today. He explains everything you need to know, including simple steps you can take to protect yourself. You can find the video at www. End of America 8.com. Although this video may be offensive to some audiences, it's worth checking out. Again, that's www.endofamerica, the number 8.com. Watch this free video at www.endofamerica 8.com. You are listening to the Intel Hub News Network, crushing the New World Order piece by piece. Welcome back, folks. We're joined by world-renowned economist Mr. Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster, having a uh, great conversation this evening. And uh, anybody that would like to call into the show, the number to call, 877-598-8549. That's 877-598-8549. If you have a question for Bob, myself, Griff, John, just give us a call and uh, sound off. But, um, Bob, you know, I saw an interesting video on YouTube um, by a uh, user at the East Watch, and it was something very simple yet very powerful when talking about inflation. Now, today, I heard Ben Bernanke kind of blow off the whole inflation uh, threat. As a matter of fact, um, what, was his, what was his words? Fed chief, um, first of all, he denies U.S. policies behind the record global food prices, but he also said that the policy uh, is not affecting inflation in any way, and that it stands at about 1% right now. Now, I take a look at the prices when it comes to food and gasoline and uh, commodities and everything else. Boy, it's jumping through the roof. Um, where Where's the truth in all this? Because th- this video that I saw, he had something very simple. He had two rolls of toilet paper. Now, they were Scott toilet paper, the thousand-sheet roll, and one of them he bought, uh, I want to say, like a year ago, and the other one he had just bought from the supermarket, and he compared the two. He put them right there next to the camera, and the one from a year ago was noticeably bigger than the one that he bought just now. As a matter of fact, if you read the dimensions of each sheet, the uh, actual sheet had shrunk, I think, a half an inch per sheet. And he you know, he calculated it out to square feet, and you're actually losing a lot of toilet paper, but you're paying the same price. So people are being bamboozled in that the prices in some aspects aren't going up, but you're getting less. And in other aspects, you're seeing the prices jump for the same amount. Uh, do you? What do you think of the Fed's numbers? And what are the real numbers when it comes to inflation? Uh, Ben Bernanke has become an accomplished liar, like his predecessor, Alan Greenspan, who sold his soul. And all of the figures that come out of the United States government are all bogus. There is nothing truthful or even near being truthful. They're calling CPI... The inflation rate one and a half percent. It's six and three quarter percent. Where will it be by the end of the year? In my figures, probably fourteen percent. Government figures, five and a half percent. I saw them do this three years ago, and they're going to do it again. And if you want to see size reflection, 
And how are you getting ripped off? Buy a box of cereal and compare it to the box a year ago or two years ago, whatever, and you'll see that you're getting ripped off. And it's subtle and it's, what's the right word? Um, deception. And they're not telling anybody about it. They're just deceiving everybody. And they're going to continue to do that as long as they can. Because corporate America, in a corporatist, fascist society, controls government. And so they do anything they want. They control the media. They control the government. And the only way anybody's going to find out the truth is by listening to this program and programs like it and going into the internet and digging out the truth. It's all there. So how I had do you somebody come- say to, I said somebody say to me this afternoon, mm-hmm. you know, for five years, by five times, this has been the most popular blog talk radio program. He said, but I can't believe that you're on seven of them. <laughs> I said, so what? I want I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. You know, I'm 75 years old. I don't get paid for this. I have a publication. I don't get paid anything from anybody for anything except the publication. And I'm driving them crazy, and I love it. <laughs> well, how do you how do you come to those inflation numbers yourself? You know, if, if for for the average layman that doesn't know how to come to that. Um, Number? How, how do you how do you come to the real number, and how do you tell? Uh, how can you see through the deception? Well, there's two numbers that you never hear about. One is based on the inflation formula from 1980, and the other from 1996. And so we have three figures: the government and the other two. Uh, the best place to go. To get those answers is with John Williams, eminent economist, far better than I am, and he's got all those numbers. It's just like the price of gold. Official inflation would have it at $2,400. Real inflation, and I gave up doing those figures because I just caught, you know I just picked John's up because they're close enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, $7,700. That's where we're going. No two ways about it. We've got to get the word out and let the people know because less than 2% of Americans own gold and silver. Well, so Bob, if we had 15%, the, uh, you'd go ballistic. Bob, the, the uh, monetary unit that we're dealing with here in this country is a Federal Reserve note, which is a promissory note with no promise. It's not a dollar. So how can you... Um, reference everything back to a dollar when gold is thirteen hundred dollars. There is no dollar. You can well, reference you'll it have back to, to promissory in, in notes. In that with case, no prom- what you have to do is give me another benchmark. But there is no benchmark. Well, you but have to create how, how something. You, how, I mean, I you have you to measure something. Me. Well, no, how do you do it? You can't do it. Well, the only the only benchmark is gold. What is and it? And then worth? you work backwards. You, you right. convert it to dollars, but there is no, uh, there is are no dollars. Well, dollar, dollar is. Well, a wait a minute, wait reference. a minute. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of other currencies mm-hmm. that the same thing has happened to in varying degrees. The Swiss franc, uh, over the last 11 years, has lost about 13 and a half percent versus gold, and about 15 percent versus silver. Uh, the U.S. dollar has lost in gold terms 20 and a half percent and 21 percent. Versus silver. No, you you, you got to create something you can measure about because you got to talk to people. So in doing so, make them understand in a very simple way what's happened. And that's why I use that versus the Federal Reserve note. You're being too sophisticated. You do that, and you don't have any audience because they don't know what the heck you're talking about. Right. You have to give them a frame of reference that they understand. Well, do do uh, uh, monetary units from different countries uh, equate out to the same, or are all of those numbers different from one country to another? They differ, and I've got them all right here in front of me. 
which country would you feel more comfortable comparing the price of gold to accurately? Okay, well, let's, let's pull out the chart. Okay, uh, this is 10-year, not 11. Sorry, I don't have the 11th year in here. Uh, gold versus the dollar has lost 18.4%. Australian dollar, 11.7%. Canadian dollar, 13.8%. The euro, 14.6%. Japanese yen, 14.9%. The Swiss franc, 12.2%. And the pound, 18.3%. Where would I go? The Swiss franc, even though it was beat out by the Australian dollar. Why? Because Australia has an economy that's totally controlled by the Illuminists. It's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. I lived in Switzerland for a number of years. I went to university there. I took eight years of French in two years. And so I know the Swiss very well but the Switzer Deutsch, as well as the Genoise. And so I understand their thinking. So I would rather be in Swiss francs if I had to be. What about what about gold and silver, Bob? Now, since we're on the topic of gold and silver, um, there's been talk. I know that uh, Max Kaiser's talked about the silver shortage um, that's out there and his campaign to crash J.P. Morgan. Um, do you think that's a realistic uh, goal for him to set to be able to crash J.P. Morgan? Absolutely. And he's been very successful so far. And silver's on its way back up again. I mean, we saw a surprise today in the outside market, which is the next delivery on March. Silver was up 62 cents at 28.91. They spent a month knocking it down. They spent a month docking gold down $120 and in into day 140 and they got nowhere. Gold was up 23.30 in the outside month. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? They're going to lose. That's what it means. What do you do? You buy gold and silver-related assets, coins, bullion, and shares. There is no other place to be. There is no place that you are safe. So let me ask you this then, coming from, uh, uh, again, you know, I'm not – I'm not too well versed in in gold and silver. How do they keep the prices suppressed for so long? How do, how do they do that and get away with it? They have a lot of money at their disposal. Uh, they could take a billion dollars and go ten to one on it easy. So uh, you know you get then you get ten billion to work with for the day, and they can do the same thing the following day. But what they usually do is manipulate the market for three or four days to slow down its momentum. They usually don't go at it for a month like they just did, but they had a myriad of reasons for doing so, as we now find out. Mm -hmm. And will it be per permanent? Of course not. They're going to lose, and they know it, but they don't care. They own 20 to 25% of the world, world's gold. So we go back in a gold standard, they're going to be winners. They got it coming and going. It's just like every war for the last thousand years. They finance both sides. Yeah, you know, I no, went I mean... counterintelligence, and the first thing I found out was that the Japanese diplomatic code was broken in 1937. So our government lined up the ships in Pearl Harbor and allowed the Japanese to come in and bomb so they can get in the war. Peachy keen, huh? Exactly right. And, you know, of course, that's not the first time that that's happened. Uh, I, you're familiar with uh, the USS Maine and the Spanish-American War. It was the same thing. You know, they had, a, they had a magazine explosion. But what better way to go to war with Spain than to blame the USS Maine on Spain to justify going to war? Same with World War II. Same with the Vietnam War and the Gulf of Tonkin incident. You know, and, and we could go on and on and on about that. Um, but... It's funny just how much they know and are willing to let happen in order to advance agendas. And um, there was something, again, that I, I saw on – I can't remember if it was YouTube or if it was Russia Today or something like that. There was a, uh, uh, a piece about the government, the U.S. government, calling other world governments about freezing the dollar. 
Do you know anything about that? About the value 